Yeah, it is. It is. Oh, is that? Uh, well, from my angle, it's like. And we can we can start. I'd like to call this meeting to order of the regular board of trustees meeting for Henry Ford College. First item, please. Roll call. Hussein Barry here. Fud Wahmoud should be here any minute. Uh, Mary Lane. Here. Celia Nasser. Here. Mary Petrikoff. Here. James Thorpe. Here. And Chair Michael Mead. Here. Second item. Next item, please. Approval of minutes. Recommended action. Move to approve the minutes of the Henry Ford College Policy Committee meeting and the regular Henry Ford College Board of Trustees meeting held on May 21st, 2018. So moved. Support. It has been moved and supported. Any discussion? Yes. Page Trustee nine Lane. under item number eight, uh, line seven. I'd like to have uh, some wording that I took exactly verbatim from the YouTube video added. Uh, line number seven says, Vice President Nealon replied that this position was requested in October. However, it is now just being filled. On the video, it says, uh, there's a little bit longer explanation. It says that it was posted, it was requested in October. There was some kind of confusion with HR. And then it says, quotation, it was just posted last month. And I'd like that to be added after it is. It was just posted last month and is now being filled. So that is one correction. I'd like to put forward another correction where it says uh, Majid Fadlala, early college principal, was included in the selection committee. Ms. D uh, Vice President Nalen said exactly at part four of the meeting videos. 19 minutes, 53 seconds. We did have Majid Fadlala sit with us when we interviewed the finalists. So he was not on the committee. He was invited in for a meeting. So I'd like to have those two corrections made. Those are verbatim from the YouTube. Okay, any other corrections? All those in favor of this motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? It's unanimous. Next item, please. Recognition and acknowledgments. Here comes a young man to do <laughs> this job. And he's got the right hat on. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Glass, Chair Mead, and members of the board. My name is Christian Moore. I am a second year student at Henry Ford College. After my first semester here, I decided I wanted to major in architecture and construction. My plan is to get both architectural degrees that HFC offers and then transfer to a university to pursue my bachelor's degree. Since my start at HFC, I have made the dean's list, been invited to join the Honor Society, worked on campus each semester, and have now been elected to student council. Now I am pleased to read this month's HFC's board acknowledgments. Ms. Aura Cazares, student, Con student conduct and compliance Title IX coordinator, was reappointed to First Lady Snyder's work group to end campus domestic violence. Ms. Cazares was part of the first work group last year and participated in development of the Let's End Campus Sexual Assault book printed in English, Arabic, and Spanish along with the resource website. On June 2nd, Henry Ford College, through the Consortium of Michigan Veterans Educators, participated in the first annual Michigan Student Veteran Leadership Symposium. This was an event for veterans planned by veterans. Objectives for this event included, one, collective encouragement, two, personal development, and three, professional networking. 78 people attended and made the event a great success. Diane Eberts, Support Staff and Counseling, received the Michigan's Occupational Special Populations Association, MOSPA, Outstanding Staff Award. Ms. Ebert coordinates American Sign Language interpreters who work with hearing impaired students and staff, selects new adaptive equipment to help students, and works on budgeting time for inside track mentors, ALS testing technicians, and hospitality technicians. In addition, she's responsible for compiling ALS data to support the Perkins Grant. HFC students Ali Haydar, Ragad Al Said, and Wale 
Wala Selain have accepted paid summer research internships at the University of Michigan Ann Arbor as part of the Institutional Research and Academic Career Development Award, a grant that also brings postdoc fellows to our campus. Last year, three students reported that this was a life-changing experience. All the best to these students in their summer adventure. HF student Abdraman al Museli completed his first summer of research at the University of Detroit Mercy in 2017 and will be returning this summer. The Rebuild grant from the National Institute of Health provides full tuition and partial support for students who are selected for summer research and subsequently transferred to U of D Mercy. Nice work, Abdraman. And that concludes the acknowledgments. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Next item, please. Next item, action items. First one is citizen participation. Citizens wishing to address the board on agenda and non-agenda items for action who have submitted a blue card to the secretary may speak at this time. I don't have any blue cards. Okay. Next item, please. Next item is special consideration of an action item. Other than action item number six, are there any other action items on this agenda which board members or the president wish to discuss and vote on separately? If there are, we will exclude these from the action below. I had one question on number three, Trust but it thought. doesn't need to be pulled. Okay. Anybody else? Trustee Lane? I'd just like to thank the college for going ahead with parking lot and sidewalk repairs. Those are really important things to do, and I'm glad to see we're doing maintenance and not waiting like the state has done on the roads. So it's a good move. I appreciate it. Good remark. Anybody else? Uh, Trustee Thorpe, item three. Let me, let, let me move yeah, forward. Oh, do you have to sure, read? Yeah. Yeah. Recommended action. Move to approve action items numbered one through five as recommended in this agenda. So moved. Su <laughs> support. <laughs> It okay. has been moved and supported that all these items be approved, except item three, right? Not except, oh, just okay. a question on item including, just a discussion. Including three. Do we need to discuss that then yeah. now? Uh, yeah. At this point you do yeah. that, yes. The, right, the question I've got is that um, the bid that we're looking to move forward with is with Veritive for 175000 but when I'm looking at the bid award, it says the total is 186000 So I'm just wondering what, why the difference? When we uh, issue the bid for the custodial supplies, which includes chemicals, cleaning products, and paper, we included a number of alternate products so that we could select, you know, between different pairings, select the one that we prefer the most that gives us the best value. So the bid results are higher than what the actual award will be because we'll be excluding some of those alternates that we have. Okay. Thanks. Any other discussion? All that has been moved and seconded for all of the action items? No? One through five. One through five. Six, Ex six we Except five. six. Fill, fill so in the blank. All those in favor of that motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? It's unanimous. Now we need to. Going back to number six, yep. certification of appointments of 2018-2019 MCCA Board of Directors. <coughs> Our recommended action is move to approve the designation of the following as representative to the MCCA Board of Directors for years 20 for the year 2018-2019. Dr. Michael Mead as trustee director and trustee Celia Nasser as alternate trustee director and Mr. Russell A. Cavaluna as president. So moved. Support been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Let me do a one. roll call vote. Please a roll call vote. Go yes. ahead. Hussein Berry, yes. Fadwa Hamoud? Yes. Mary Lane? Yes. Celia Nasser? Yes. Mary Petchikoff? Yes. James Thorpe? Yes. And Chair Michael Mead? Here. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're here. Ah, uh, yes, I am. <laughs> the next item, please. Next item is Board of Trustees Business. First item is the acknowledgement of correspondence. No. Okay. Next Second item. item is board committee reports. Um, the um, audit committee met just before um, coming up here, and uh, we met with uh, Plant Moran, who will be doing the audit for us. We are in the interim phase currently, 
um, we'll have draft statements by the October meeting of the at the completion of the audit. Very good. Any other committee meeting reports? Next item, please. Request for information and or future agenda items. Trustee Lane. Uh, Dr. Maleko could add to this, but I do want to uh, report to the rest of the board that uh, apparently it's passed the Michigan Senate unanimously that there is an amendment to be uh, made to the Open Meetings Act, allowing boards such as ours to meet in closed session to address security issues. Uh, Dr. Maleko could give us more information. He met with State Senator uh, David Knesek, and I think there is now a House bill. Uh, yeah, Dr. So Maleko. basically, um, it was my regular meeting that I had with the state representatives and senators. We scheduled them every two to three months to talk about mm -hmm. different issues. And he was happy to mention to me, and it was based on he actually kind of called it the trustee lane. Uh, <laughs> uh, good. <laughs> it should be the trustee lane bill. And, yeah, and so it was kind of neat that he said he was pushing it through and that it would be, and he said it made sense, it was common sense, and that uh, it's hopefully it'll go through the House of Representatives as well. Um, and uh, he always appreciates input and ideas. We came up with a few other things, but we had a lot of, we had a really positive meeting, so we decided, uh, I said, well, let's call trustee lane and we got through a voice message just to let him know that he's been working on it. So I think that's a real positive, it's a no-brainer. It's common sense that you wouldn't want to be discussing safety and security in an open meeting to let anyone who wants to know what your, you know, your techniques are yeah. and uh, things that you do. So, so that's kind of where it's at, so hopefully it'll go through. Well, our appreciation to well, you, I, Trustee I'd like Lane. to thank the rest of the board, Dr. Maleko, of course. Mm -hmm. We've been proactive on safety issues. Uh, we uh, were out in front of a lot of the issues, and, and uh, I think that's that's been to our advantage. It's worked well. So well, thank it's you. It's just another thing that we... Yes. Since we're on that topic, too, I just want to remind the board and everyone that we have that drill that we're doing tomorrow at William Ford. Mm -hmm. And so the board can expect to get a notice from me, but understand that it's going to be, because we want to do everything we do, whether that be through text or incident, but understand that this incident Oh, it's the drill be, notice. It's a drill. <laughs> I'll make sure I put drill, but we want to, I'll be there getting interviewed. Um, they don't want me there until 1045. Board trustees are welcome to observe if they want to go. Uh, they don't want me there early because they want me to go in the time that I would probably get there, which would mean when the press gets there. Uh, but the drill is actually, I believe it's going to start around 8.30. It's going to go from 8.30. So um, we're doing an active sh shooter drill. Like they called it something else uh, up and they put it up the press. But I just want everyone to know. And we've been planning this for about a year, actually, uh, prior to any deal of shooting incidents. So I just wanted to mention that since so it's kind of timely with the school safety uh, you know, leg legislation. Well, oh, it's a very important drill. Thank you very much for putting <coughs> it together. And yes, Trustee Lane. I have another one. Sure. Uh, we were given information on the president's update uh, on legal costs for presidential search and stipends. I'm unclear what that actually means. So I understand that there were two, maybe three persons who were given stipends, financial stipends, for additional workload that, was, uh, that they willingly undertook. Um, during the presidential search. I don't know whether all persons were given, all persons who did that, including Vice President Chadwick, I don't know whether all persons were compensated or just two or, I mean, obviously, interim President Setkowski is one person. I believe Mr. Cunningham might be another person. I know that some people undertook additional work and uh, I don't, and, and when this is titled stipends, I don't know whether, I'm assuming that, that those stipends are not included in this. So I would like some kind of either explanation or a memo on what we foresee for legal issues. We have uh, a legal firm that works, does work for us. Then we also have a staff attorney and she has an assistant. I'd like an overview about, you know, who does what. Uh, Mr. Tuckle, so far as we recognize, recently did the presidential search, but uh, this 15,000, I'm assuming that those are his costs, and that's 
to review the contract stipends rather than this fifteen thousand is everything. But I don't know that. I don't know that from this discussion. And then when you go to page seven and eight, I mean, there's a, li a list of bullet points, but what they mean, I don't know. So perhaps we can have some uh, further explanation. I would like to know what our total legal costs right now uh, for the college. For this particular issue? Of no, I, I'm oh, assuming everything. that oh, the, the 15000 is the, the legal cost for the review of the presidential contract, and Kathy is saying yes, so. Uh, so that's one thing, but I'd like to know overall what are our legal costs running per annum, and then uh, you know how does that break down? How much is it done in house? I know that we, as the policy committee, have met with Ms. Clark and, and uh, Ms. DiMatteo, and I know that they're doing some work. They do review of contracts, but I don't know who all does what. So I'd like uh, to have an overview, and then secondly. I'd like to urge that we do an RFP right now since I've been on this board, which has been since time memorial, at least in my mind. Uh, I don't recall us doing uh, an RFP for legal services. We need to do an RFP to assure that we're getting uh, good value for our money. Uh, we've had the same legal firm and they've served us. but. Uh, I think it's time and we're overdue to do an RFP for legal services. Okay, any? I'd like to add to that. Uh, I asked something similar last year when I was serving on the finance committee uh, and I was told that uh, at the K through 12 side, we're under contract. Are we, un I guess the question becomes, are we under contract with the current uh, legal firm, so? I believe it's been um, the board appointed but so long way before I got here um, and then it's been it's well that's more than 18 years ago okay. so then um, it's been a rolling um, kind of a thing that has been no RP that I'm aware of since that initial I know we did okay <coughs> yeah, I know we did one at uh, K through 12 yeah, about mm -hmm. six years ago maybe a little longer mm -hmm. well, I, um, I know Jim, Jim and I were still on the board back then so yeah. yeah it had to have been at least oh nine twenty ten something like that yeah right now these contracts have a rolling clause I've we? never seen it so okay. I can't speak to yeah, it yeah okay yeah we need to look into it yeah mm -hmm. that's a good idea I mean I, I think I, it's I a good idea uh, too trustee lane for bringing that up mm -hmm. you, know, you always want to sharpen the pencil trustee um, I read in the paper um, over the weekend, um, and if my memory is serving me correctly, um, that there is a bill going through the House or the Senate that they um, t to no longer raid the school aid fund for post-secondary um, funding. Mm -hmm. um, so as we move into having conversation about a millage renewal, we may want to have some conversation and keep our eye on where that bill goes because funding for the community college then may be impacted Correct. by that um, particular legislation. Very good. I have something yeah. else. Mine is a fun one. Uh, no offense, Dr. C. Lane. No, no. But uh, I, I spent the morning, uh, I spent the morning, anytime you're talking with, uh, I got to be careful, I got a lawyer in the room, so I'll just stop right there. Any, I, spent, uh, I spent the morning with my grandson at uh, a college just northwest of here. I don't know, it's a community college. I don't have to mention the name, give him an advertisement. But uh, uh, it, was, it, was, it was a really nice basketball camp. Uh, and uh, the coaches from that college and some of the players were there. And about 40 young kids, elementary age. And the question is, do we do something like that at this college? Do we reach out to the community? And when the kids got settled, I started wandering around, looking for trouble, I guess. And uh, I asked at the counter, I said, you know what, for the last couple hours I've been here, a lot of senior citizens have been walking in and out. Do you have like a special program? And the young lady looked at me, she said, citizens are lifelong learners I'm like okay so <laughs> lifelong learners which they do I guess uh, I guess during downtime they open up the fitness center for them Saturday morning they open up the basketball gym uh, 
do we do any of that, I guess, would become the we question. We do do summer camps. We have a program out of workforce development. Michael Nealon could probably speak to that, perhaps. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> we have a not here. Um, it doesn't have to be tonight. We can wait. Sure, we can. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Has uh, uh, eight to ten separate camps that we run over <coughs> the summer. Everything from STEM, so people who might be, and we're especially targeting underrepresented uh, student populations, so uh, uh, young young ladies that might be interested in STEM fields. Uh, we have the culinary. As so far as having a basketball uh, camp, I'll have to look into it. Yeah. I, I don't believe. Yeah, that's a good way to get. What's that? Baseball and volleyball are the two that we, okay. that, that we do. And these are well marketed? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. I guess under that same uh, thought, uh, I know we offer a discount, a huge discount for our senior citizens to take classes at Henry Ford College. Uh, they're free. It's free. Yeah, it's free. It's free. I was it's reminded that. It's a real big discount. Whoa, 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 slow down, slow down. I was reminded that the classes are free, but then the fees. The, the have you. So it's not completely yeah. free. Yeah, it's it's nice. discounted 60% or something. Talk to Steve I would just like to see how many, uh, how many, you know, people take advantage of the community. I guess it's one way to reach out to the community and give back. So if it's a big number, I would like to see it advertised someplace that, hey, yeah, we are doing something out to the community. Okay, our goal was 7.35, so I'll just shut up right now. <laughs> Trustee <laughs> Fadwa. Oh. Um, <coughs> no, thank you. Those are all um, great questions, but and I wanted to echo uh, Trustee Lane's comments as well. I had originally requested that information as to our legal fees and to the stipends, and I was kind of surprised um, to not see some names on there as well. Um, so I would appreciate an explanation. I do think uh, it would be it would be wise to now do an RFP for legal counsel. I um, looking at some of the numbers even in the past. I'm not going to say they brought up concerns, but I think it's important, like Trustee Barry said, to just sharpen sharpen up our pencils. Um, I did just come back from Boston, mm -hmm. and. Uh, as some of you may know, I had the privilege and unique opportunity to participate in a program over at Harvard Business School. I would love to tell you all about it and hopefully do a brief presentation at some point um, where I attended the program with brilliant minds from all over the nation that I was really, I was shocked that I was even part of them. Um, but one of the issues that we discussed specifically for Detroit was our infrastructure. And uh, the M1 rail, if you remember, mm -hmm. came on, it, it, they had campaigned in front of us all. And one thing that I hope to present on, one thing that really struck me, an issue that is prevalent all around the nation was whether it's infrastructure or education, uh, there is a huge racism problem in this country. There really is, and it affects our roads, it affects our education system, and many, many, many other things. Um, and dissecting the infrastructure, public transit for the city of Detroit, um, and realizing how apparent race was in the middle of it all uh, was shameful. And it made us realize we have a long way to go. And the way that we change that is through education. Uh, and is to make sure that we provide everyone with the best education, an education that is inclusive uh, and, and diverse in whatever that means. Uh, but that is on us, and I think that uh, we're doing a, hopefully our part in that, but I do think that we still have a long way to go. So I look forward to talking to you all about my experience at some point. Yeah, I'd like to hear that. Yeah. Sounds very intriguing. Trustee Lane. Would it be more appropriate here? I mean, we have infrastructure needs, obviously, at both locations. I don't know which is, is your thinking. Of. Well, you know what? It, it, that was just one of the topics. Mm -hmm. I was going to concentrate on the education aspect of it around the nation. Uh, community colleges were also a big topic. And, uh, oh, you mean, you mean what, the presentation here or the actual? Oh, yeah. But if any of you have any questions yeah. about some of the topics, you feel free to call me. And I think she means whether you should make the presentation right. at P12 or at the, P12 or at the level. college. Okay. 
Or both. Okay. I like both. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> She's got Anybody to really else? put a dynamic uh, fireball of a presentation together then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, she's little, capable. Yeah, she's capable. I'm just a little discouraged when when I think that uh, we had Jim Crow laws up until very recently, and I, we fought a civil war more than 150 years ago. We're still struggling with racism and issues on immigration. Um, it's pretty discouraging to me, and I think that the human species maybe evolves slower than any other species uh, because we haven't made a whole lot of progress. And we have free public education in the United mm -hmm. States, so I just feel that we should have made better progress, but we haven't really done so great. But look at Flint. <laughs> but we have great opportunities here at uh, yeah, Henry yeah, Ford College well, because we have super diversity yeah, but and we, we have a great opportunity to educate need, an awful lot of people that need the education. To open our minds. Well, of course. We need to be open to change because change m is inevitable and we will have to change, but it's hard for us to do. It's it's easy to cling to the old and and not change. Okay. Any other Request for information and or future agenda items. Next item, please. Board member commentary? I think we had some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does anybody kind of wish <laughs> to uh, continue? Yes, Trustee Lane. Uh, Dr. Mead, I, I know you've been asking us about a special meeting. Yes. So I um, wanted you to, I hope it's not on here so I wanted you to address that if you would okay so I'm asking for the board to meet July 16th at 7 o'clock p.m. to discuss the millage and um, so far I think we have everybody on board I just didn't know about yes. I will be there uh, okay so we will all plan to meet here at 7 o'clock on July 16th and the topic is primarily the uh, the millage yes to prepare myself I have been asking people how they feel about it okay so um, you know I've asked some my neighbors and some politicians so I would urge everyone else to do the same and to give it a lot of thought but to talk about it and uh, okay educate ourselves all right uh, yeah. let's let's prepare for it I know we'll be given information yes. but we need to prepare ourselves as best as possible because it's a it's a, an important decision and it's it's a decision that I know we'll struggle with so okay. better prepared better decision anybody else okay future oops next item please next item uh, future meeting dates Monday, June 25th, 2018, P through 12, Board of Education meeting, 7 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center in the Frank Frenchie Boardroom. Monday, July 16th, that's the meeting that Trustee Lane and Dr. Meese are referring to. Monday, July 16th, at, Henry, at the Henry Ford Board of Trustees meeting, 7 p.m. at the Henry Ford College Administrative Services and Conference Center in the Rosenau Boardroom. Then we have Monday, July 23rd, 2018, P through 12, Board of Education meeting, 7 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center in the Frank French, Frank Frenchy Boardroom. It's a tongue twister. Mm -hmm. Then we have Monday, August 13th, 2018, Henry Ford College Board of Trustees meeting, 7 p.m. at the Henry Ford College Administrative Services and Conference Center in the Rosenau Boardroom. And our last one scheduled here is Monday, August 20th. 2018, P through 12 Board of Education meeting, 7 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center in the Frank Frenchie Boardroom. And August is the month that we flip. The yes, college the comes. Reflects, uh, yes. Just so everybody's aware. <laughs> and so I have, Mr. Okay, Chair. But uh, we have been reminded June 25th we're supposed to be there at 5:15. Okay. For a close. For a close session, 5:15. On the t on the 25th of June and the P12, potentially could yeah. still change. Okay, so look for your emails. Hey, 
we're adjourned. <laughs> Look at the grands. Did you bet? Yeah, what did you say? Stop. There was no proof. <laughs> <laughs> Remember stories? <laughs> was recorded. Yeah.